G'day everyone, uh, welcome back to my little home machine shop. My name is Aaron. Um, on our next installment of this little Hercus CNC retrofit, I'm gonna take you on a journey on mounting the AMT encoders. Now here are my servo motors. I have two of these. Of course, they have a different end on them. And uh, as discussed previously, these are made by Electrocraft in the USA. They're a permanent magnet servo motor, all right? And uh, as I discussed previously, they had resolvers bolted on the back of these, okay? And I'm getting rid of that. Now, the AMT encoder, guys, these are the ones that I bought off Peter Homan's website. They will attach to the back here, but unfortunately, the mounting bracket they provide you does not fit the bolt pattern of the servo motor. So let's take you over to the bench and I'm gonna show you the way I'm gonna attack this today. Uh, now, once I design up what I'm gonna do, I'll put those files up for free on the Hercus user group on Facebook. So let's head on over to the bench, shall we? Righto, I've brought you back over to my bench here and uh, here's the servo motor in all its glory. What I was trying to explain to you on camera before was here's the part that they've given me and you can see here there's no way that that's going to attach. So I've had a good think about this and I'm going to attempt this by using what we call an annulus. So an annulus is a circular shape, like a donut with another circle inside of it. And I'll make uh, an annulus that will bolt onto here uh, via these mounting bolts, either two or f using two or four, or we'll depend on the design. All right, so let's start getting some measurements here today. So I can bring that down here, lock it off. And my step is just over two and a half mil. So when I'm designing that, I'll take that in, into account. I'll probably make it three and a half mil thick. The inside diameter here is 25. So I'll make that a little bit bigger. The outside diameter here is just 50.6, 50.7, something like that. Um, so I'll make that, probably make that 52. And let's have a look at this adapter plate here. And you can see here that the external diameter there is actually 52. Distance between those two holes is about 46. And these two holes here, the distance between those two holes, I've got here 39. So when I'm designing this, I'm gonna design a circle, another circle to the diameter I want. I'm gonna extrude that about three, three and a half millimeters. I'll then um, find this point here and put a circle, do a circular pattern. Um, I'll probably use countersunk screws on these to get them a lower profile mounting so they don't interfere when I bolt this on. Then I'll work out, I might even just put two sets of bolt patterns here in case people wanna use the inside ones as well as the outside ones and then I'll just circular pattern them around as well. So let's head on over and we'll jump on the CAD and get this done. Uh, from CAD, I'll be moving into the Bamboo software and I'll print these on the Bamboo H2S printer. And most probably uh, I won't use PLA because PLA, even though PLA is quite strong, it does degrade over time. It should be fine in a dark environment that's not exposed to sunlight. But look, I've got some ASA carbon fiber there. So let's print with that. Let's head on over to the uh, computer. Okay, I've brought you over to my computer and I've got the Bamboo Lab Studio opened here. Let's bring in the model that we designed earlier. You would have seen that I exported it both as an STL file and also as a 3MF file or a step file, I think was the other one that I used. Let's bring it in here now. And at the moment it wants to default to the AMS number one, which is in there, which is purple eSun filament. So let's get rid of that because I'm not going to print it in PLA and we're going to pick Bamboo ASA Carbon Fiber. Now, before I go in too far, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to select, make sure that I've got 0.12 high quality picked. And in strength, I'm going to change it from the default 15% and make it 50. And Bamboo Studio will come up here and give me a little um, red warning to say that I've changed from their uh, default settings. And what we're going to do now, I'm going to copy and paste that. So Control C. Command V, I've got five, I'll print five of these. And let's do an automatic arrange. 
And there we have it there, ladies and gents. So we can slice this down. We can see that we're using, uh, what is it, about 18.69 grams of filament. It's a uh, total printing times two hours and eight minutes. All right. Now the cost for these little parts, so it's giving me a rough now, I'm not sure if that's US dollars or Australian dollars, but it's saying 70 cents, and I reckon I reckon that's US dollars. All right. Okay, let's print this here today and uh, get cracking. Um, brought you over to the bench to show you the fitting of this encoder. Now I've already done this one off camera for a trial run. So here is my adapter that I've made and uh, you saw them 3D printing earlier and they fit on there perfectly. Okay. Now having the four holes is a little tiny bit of play there but having those four holes should help to line it up that little bit better. So let's put a little tiny bit of Loctite on these before I put them in today. And this will just help to center everything spot on. Little screwdriver in here. I've got you on manual focus while I'm showing you this. Hopefully you can see well enough. I'm not gonna put a lot of Loctite on. I don't envisage there'll be a problem with this. But I don't want the screws coming loose and the encoder falling off. Now there's our four screws that are on. We'll just tighten those up. So as I was speaking before on the video, the filament I decided to go with here today is ASA-CF, which is carbon fiber. Um, it's quite strong. It's a little bit more resilient to wear and tear and that sort of stuff. These uh, servo motors are enclosed, so there's no sunlight getting to them. What we need to do now is actually fit the little adapter ring on the back here and they give you a tool to do that so I'll just tighten these up a bit more. Alright so here's our little tool that they give you. Now they also give you this um, tool that helps you push the encoder on, the, uh, the bush on I should say sorry. So the red is for a 6mm shaft so we'll put the red in there. We put it in there like so. I'm gonna stick this over here and this will dictate the height. And we can just push down on that now. And I can check it here as well that I'm fine. So the wires are coming out this way, so I'll put them on that way there. Put these little ones on here first. Now off camera I had to tap the little M3 holes, even though I printed them with the thread in them, it's just, um, I suppose they're just delicate little threads and if the bamboo printer isn't printing 100% accurately, um, I couldn't get them started. So I just ran the, a tap through them quickly. Now I'm probably going overkill here with all these screws, they probably don't need that many. But I thought, while well, I've got them, I'll put them in. Why not? And there we have it. She's going in now. Now, they tell you in the book that you should put this on and just see in the data manual, I'll just take this off here, that that is fitting on there. And I think I've aligned that right. So, now in here is our encoder. Now I still have to set the PPR, all right? I think that's what it's called, PPR, the um, pulse per revolution, I think, it, I think it means. And it's currently default, they're all off at the moment, okay? And I think that's about 7,000 RPM and I forget the resolution at that, but I need to adjust those, which I'll do so later. 
but that goes on here like so. It's got to line him up. May have to turn that shaft a little bit to get it to line up. There you go. And straight on. And they clip in and there's our encoders mounted to both of the servo motors. And there's not a lot out there on these servo motors. They're, um, they're like I said, they're 40 year old. Um, very hard to find a data sheet on it. But when I wire this, they've got a second set of brushes here. And I think that's for a taco for the, um, to give feedback to the resolvers. Well, that uh, wraps us up for today, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I trust you found this interesting, uh, especially the whole, um, you know, idea that I had, uh, taking it through the whole evolution of design. So, um, you know, CAD drawing, that sort of stuff. Now, I didn't take you through all the iterations of this design. So a couple of my first designs that I did, uh, I was going to use cap head screws, but that would have pushed the encoder um, too far away from the shaft. You can see here, I've got about three mil of the shaft sticking out. So I was happy with that. And like I was saying earlier, I probably went overkill with these uh, mounting screws, but look, it's better to be safe than sorry. So let's just move these to the side for a second. Now I did promise you this week that I'd be showing you the Masso, but uh, unfortunately the Masso arrived later than what I thought. Um, and that's my fault for taking so long to put the order in but it did show up, ladies and gentlemen. So here it is here in all its glory. So next Tuesday, when you come back, let's get this opened and um, let's have a look at it and let's discuss a bit more about the Masso and why I opted for it and why I went along with it, all right? And uh, who knows, we, if I uh, asked to Tinder nicely, he might be able to join us on a call or something to explain a, a few features of the Masso and, uh, I believe they've got a new model now, so um, it's a few different purchasing options, so might, that might be best to come from him. Anyway, look, on that note, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you next week on this little Hercus CNC lathe retrofit. Cheers. Bye for now.